Okay, so we're going to look at a very basic, very beginning introduction to pharmacokinetics. I've called it pharmacokinetics from the beginning. Um, we're going to look at the absolute simplest system to start with to get some of the ideas and some of the ways of quantifying some of the mathematics behind it. Um, uh, and then later on we can move on to more complex ideas and, and perhaps more realistic scenarios. But for the moment, let's think about the body as just a beaker of water. Um, it's got water flowing into it because we eat and drink and it's got water flowing out of it. Um, but the overall volume of water, so we call that volume, um, give that the symbol V, and we say that that volume is pretty much constant. Um, so overall, even though we we take water in and, and give water out, uh, the overall volume stays pretty much the same. Um, so we can give a drug, so say we give a tablet, and that we call that the dose of the drug, and that's given the symbol D, and that might be in milligrams or micrograms or nanograms. Um, uh, so we give a dose D and that dissolves instantaneously into this volume V. Um, the other assumption that we make is that it mixes, uh, it's, it's well mixed, it mixes instantly. Okay, so um, it gets dissolved in that whole volume immediately. I know that's not true, but let's just go with it for now and um, let's see where that takes us. So the concentration at the start is called C0, so that's the concentration, um, or call it the initial concentration, um, and that is equal to the dose divided by the volume. Um, so the dose, like I said, would be in milligrams or micrograms or nanograms, and the volume would be in mils or litres or something like that. Okay, so let's think about what will happen then after um, a period of time. So say at the very beginning, let's put some numbers to this. Let's say C0 is, let's call it 100 um, micrograms per mil. Um, and say that the outflow is say one mil per minute, because that's not too far off. Um, so in the first minute, we'll lose um, one mil of a hundred micrograms per mil. So that's a hundred micrograms. So we lose a hundred micrograms of our drug in the first minute. If we fast forward to some time later on, say when the concentration is now, I don't know, say 20, micrograms per mil. Then at this time, in one minute, we'll lose again a mil, but this time it's a mil of a lower concentration. It's a mil of 20 micrograms per mil, which is going to be 20 micrograms. So if you see at the start we lost 100 micrograms in a minute, but later on when the concentration is lower we've only lost 20 micrograms in a minute. And if we draw a graph to just sort of sketch or sketch a graph to, to show what's happening. So we're starting off at C0. The concentration is dropping fairly rapidly to start off with. But then after some time, as the concentration is lower, we're losing it more slowly. And this is actually exponential decay. So what we've said if I just draw a line there, what we've said is that the rate of loss of concentration um, is proportional to the concentration. In fact, I could say the rate of loss of the amount of drug or, or the concentration, they're this, I'm thinking of them as being the same because the volume is, is constant. Um, Okay, so the rate of loss is proportional to the concentration, and this is this is by definition a first order process. 
So if you hear people talk about first order, that is the definition of first order, when the rate of change of concentration is proportional to the concentration. And we can describe the, um, this curve, this, um, this relationship, through a mathematical equation. So the concentration at any time is given by the concentration at the start, C0, times E to the minus Ke times T. So let's just have a, a look at those symbols for the moment. So C is concentration, and C0, we've already said, is initial concentration. E is Euler's number. Um, people often get a bit hung up about what is this E thing. Um, e is just a number. It's 2.718 something something something. Um, well, it's a bit like pi is just a number really, isn't it? Three, pi is 3.1415, so on, so on, so on. Um, we sort of accept that, that pi is a number, so E is just a number as well. Um, it has some really neat properties, uh, which I don't really want to go into here, um, because they're not really important for understanding this aspect of pharmacokinetics. So I'm going to go into a different video um, about E in, in a little bit more detail and, and using your calculator and, and um, uh, yeah and logarithms and natural logarithms and so on. But for the moment I just want to talk about these basic ideas. So E is 2.718. Ke is the rate constant for elimination. And so Ke is, it has a particular value for it, so it's a characteristic for a particular drug. So some drugs are eliminated relatively quickly, others are eliminated more slowly, um, uh, so they have a particular Ke value. Um, the Ke is usually given as a characteristic for um, a healthy average adult. Um, but so it can change though with, um, with disease, um, it might be different um, if another drug is given alongside or if there are other factors to be taken into account. And we can look at all of that later on, but just for now, Ke is the characteristic um, for a drug and it's called the rate constant for elimination. Um, the other thing that's quite interesting about this sort of exponential decay, so this is exponential decay, um, is this thing that we call half-life. So if we start at C0 and we go down to half C0 and we think about how long does it take for that to happen, that is known as the half-time, half-life. And if we go from half C0 to a quarter C0, that takes the same amount of time. And indeed from a quarter to an eighth is also the same. So no matter where you choose, we could start at a certain concentration there, go down to half that concentration, the time taken will be the half time. And the half time is related to the Ke. So the half life is equal to the natural log of 2 over the Ke. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a separate video about logarithms and natural logarithms, but for the moment, um, ln 2 is, if you put it into your calculator, you'll find out that it's a number and it's 0.693. Um, so the half-life uh, is related to the Ke. So for something that has a, um, a, a large Ke, you've got this divided by a large number is going to give you a small half-life. Or something that's a small Ke is going to have a large half-life. Okay, so they're inversely related. So if the half-life is in minutes or hours or days, then the Ke is minutes to the minus one, or hours to the minus one, or days to the minus one. Okay, so when you're using this formula, the Ke and 
the t should have matching units. So if your ke is in minutes to the minus one, your time should be in minutes. Or if ke is hours to the minus one, time should be hours. Okay, so um, that's the basic introduction to pharmacokinetics. But what I wanted to emphasize here really is, is these three ways of thinking about this, these ideas. So we had our model, our sort of physical or physiological model on the left here. So that's like our diagrammatic form. We talked about a graphical re representation of that, showing how the concentration of the drug changes with time. And then we had a, a mathematical equation, the symbol version of the same thing. And all of these are representing the same ideas. This is a first order process where the concentration is changing with time such that the rate of loss of concentration, the rate of change of concentration is proportional to the concentration. Okay, so watch out for the next video, which is a little bit more of a talk about this LUN and this E and how you can use this equation to get some useful things out of it.